is in your hands my life is in your hands you took control when i was young when i was not able my life is in your hands my life is in your hands you took control Welcome to my show called Inspired Blessings with Jean Marie Prince. And today my guest, uh, coming back as the second time, is guest Bobby Lloyd. Yes. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And um, you kind of met Christ when, uh, while you were living a life of crime, violence, and pornography, and uh, also drug addiction. He also surrendered to the Lord in 1984. You entered a Brooklyn Teen Challenge, a discipleship program, right, for those with life-controlling problems. And you also help pioneer Long Island Teen Challenge and uh, serves as an associate pastor of Freedom Chapel Assembly of God in Amityville, New York, and also an executive uh, director of Long Island uh, Citizens for Community Values. And I'm sure there's more that I didn't even probably say, right? Yes, it is. Because <laughs> I know that your bio is, is long. <laughs> yeah, but uh, very interesting, though. You got to see, it's a very interesting read. Yeah, well, you know, uh, it was all the Lord. Mm -hmm. I, I, Listen, I didn't plan any of these any of these things. So now I just follow the Lord and see what He says, and He He comes through for me. That's all I can tell you. I have faith in Him, and you know, is, am I perfect? No. Are my children perfect? No. But we know that we have the Lord, mm -hmm. and that's what keeps us going. Right. Um, I know that on my first uh, interview with you, uh, we really went deep into your testimony, mm -hmm. and and like I said, is a life of crime, violence. Uh, pornography and drug addiction and, and, and so on. So I would suggest that for anybody that really wants to hear your testimony is to go on to my YouTube channel or, or go to my website and you know they'll show, see it actually because I'll have the YouTube link there at the TV show tab. Oh, okay. Yeah, good, so they good. can be able to watch that. Um, so it's very interesting, so I would recommend for you to really uh, to watch it. Um, but giving me like a short explanation and uh, you know, when and why did you give your life over to the Lord? Well, it wasn't really my choice. I was um, serving a life sentence in, in, under the Rockefeller law. And uh, it was just messed up and I, they changed the law and I was able to get out of prison. But while I was in prison, a young lady came to visit me who I had been knowing for a long time. Uh, her brother was my best friend in school, and um, you know, and, and sh she met the Lord. Mm -hmm. She really, she had a real conversion, and so she would come to visit me and try to get me, try to convert me. And uh, you know, I, I wasn't going for it. The only reason mm -hmm. I really even even let, even talked to her because number one, when you're in jail, you don't have any women coming, you know, in jail. So right. you know, it's always good to have a, a nice, pretty face to talk to, and mm -hmm. you know, and then long to, hair. Long, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And she, and she um, and not only that, when she comes, she would bring me a chocolate custard pie, which I love, and you can't get them in jail. And matter of fact, by the time I, by the time it got to me, it was half gone anyway. Now, why would she come to visit you? Because you were saying that this is your your good friend's sister. Yes. It's not you know often that you would have a situation like that. So she well, also she, maybe she, liked you a little bit. Yeah, or yeah. Well, she well, went to witness she to you. had a, a, a childish crush on me okay. when she was younger, you know, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and it just stayed. And then when she got saved, I don't, all I can say is the Holy Spirit must have got it towards me. You were me. her mission. Yes, yes, <laughs> you know? very much so, very much so. Right. And she hung in there that mission. It's a, it, it was a battle for her. Right. It was a battle for me. Uh, then we find she thought I was saved, and mm -hmm. you know I went to a church and accepted the Lord, and she just knew that I got the same conversion that she got. Right. But boy, was she in for a rude awakening. Right. You know, you know. <laughs> what well, kind of ministry in, in the fact that oh. the ministries and things like that that she was going to be involved with along with you? Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, I mean, God knew the whole plan. Sure. You know, and uh, and we just opposite night and day. We're, she's white. I'm black. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, she's a she goes all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and but God made it that way. Mm -hmm. right. And it helps me because sometimes I get lots of days ago. You know. And, and, and she'll say, come on, we got to go forward, we got to go forward. And I do, because mm -hmm. I know that God didn't put us together for no reason. Right, right, right. 
Now, you also were dealing with medical illnesses, right, or, or health oh, for a while? I, oh, I had, you name it, I had pancreatic cancer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, stayed in the hospital, the operation took 10 hours, stayed mm -hmm. in the hospital six weeks, um, came home, mm -hmm. and uh, was still, I looked like I looked like a scarecrow. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I think I, I weighed 200, 198 pounds, something like that, and I've never been that light. But uh, God saw me through it. Everybody kept saying, oh, he's going to die, he's going to mm -hmm, die, he's mm -hmm. going to die. But God had a different plan, right. you know. And then I ended up getting colon cancer. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And uh, so it's really to, testing out your rough faith. Oh, there. yeah, yeah. Mm. But that's another miracle. Uh, the first doctor that, that did it for me was in Stony Brook. Uh, I'm sorry, in uh, um, Sloan Kettering. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Brennan, and he, I mean, he was just amazing just to, just to have that man talk to you because I, I told him, I don't even know if my insurance is going to cover the operation. Right. You know what that man told me? He said, I don't care about that. He said, you get the hospital to give you a room, I'll do the operation for wow. nothing. Wow. Well, that was a godsend. Yes, yes. And yeah. then I got the colon cancer and I met another young doctor that was from Sloan Cabin, but at Stony Brook. Mm -hmm. And he said, I can, he said I, can, I can get this. He said, I believe I can really get this if you're willing to let me do it. And he did. He went in. Mm. And it was, was a little microscope right, type thing, and, right. and got it all. Right. Got it all. And we were talking uh, 15 years for the colon cancer, and I mean for the uh, the um, yeah for, for the colon cancer, and mm -hmm. uh, it just been a, it's just been a an experience with God. It, right. really, it really has, you know. Well, I'll tell you this: it's it's got to have made you made the, your face stronger. Um, so, well, praise God that you're here. Mm. Yes. Appreciate yes. it. Now. LICCV, okay. Uh, please give me an idea what that is. You know, along with like when it was formed and, and what was the purpose for it. Long Island Citizens for mm -hmm. Community Values. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been doing it for 20 years now. Okay. Uh, it's an organization that protects women, children, and families from the sexualized culture we live in. We try to warn parents and and and, and loved ones on how to protect themselves by getting certain devices on their uh, media equipment, mm -hmm. you know, and this way it does, and, and it's called Covenant Eyes, and it works great, it really does. But the thing is this, parents have to wake up and say, you know what, I gotta look in this a little, a little further. Mm -hmm. Because at home you can protect them, but what happens when they go out to a library, you know, or go to a friend's house, you know, that's why this message uh, in the dealing with sexualized culture has got to hit the church. The yeah. church has got to wake up. I really, really do. I mean, uh, there's not one church I go in that when I get finished speaking, that somebody come up to me, or either that following Monday or Tuesday, I get a phone call saying my husband is, is, is using pornography and I don't know how to approach him, or, or my son is involved in this, I don't know how to approach him. And that's where the church comes in, you mm -hmm. know, to, to get to get them, open the doors up. You know, and, and, and let guys like me come in and ladies like my wife come in and help them to help these people. I, I mean, the, the church is like a hospital. Mm -hmm. So if people can't go there to get healed, you know, right. then what good is it? Because this is a, really a spiritual battle. Yes, it right. is a spiritual battle. It is more of a spiritual battle than a physical one because I've seen, I've seen guys remove themselves from it physically but still have a spiritual battle mm -hmm. they go through. So. Mm -hmm. Who else? Who else knows how to deal with that better than, than God, the Lord? Yeah. Than the Lord Himself. Yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know. So, I mean, we do we do a number of things. Not just church. We uh, work with legislators. We've been uh, uh, Mayor Giuliani. Give mm -hmm. you answers. He was um, he was bent on closing down Forty Second Street mm -hmm. because Disney offered him some right. money. I don't care what they offered him, but it was good. But they didn't know how to do it. So they called on an organization out of Cincinnati, and Cincinnati called us and said, listen, they want to come to New York to help um, clear up 42nd mm -hmm. Street and the surrounding right. areas. Would you help us? He said, you know the area, we don't. And right. So I said, sure, no problem. And we went in with a team of experts. Uh, we ended up by cleaning up the places. A lot of them were prostitutions, houses. Some of them were just sex houses. Um, they were selling drugs. I mean, it was a, it just wasn't one thing that we, right. we bust them on. Bust them on a lot of a lot of different things, and we got rid of 139 high-profile sex shops right. in Manhattan. Right. You know, so we, we've been and, we, and since then we've been 
It's closing out, but not here. I work with the town. I had worked with the town of Babylon for a long time. Um, you know, Rich Schaefer and Steve Ballone, and they have a they have a quality of life uh, force that they want to see town of Babylon and, and Long Island cleaned up. And so they, you know, we've been working together for a number of years, and it has been a great partnership. It really has. I think it should go throughout the whole country. <laughs> yeah, right? well, it would be. It would be yeah, nice. you know. Um, I know that pornography uh, is so bad for marriages, mm -hmm. you know, and so in what ways do you, do you say that to be true? Well, first of all, for you to be viewing pornography and being married, it's just like bringing a prostitute in your bed. You know, would you do that? You know, it's fornication, mm -hmm. you know, and it leads to other things that need to be, the, you know, that you need to deal with. But the problem is going back, no one knows how to deal with it, and no one wants to deal with it. But in order to clean it up, we're going to have to deal with it. You know, and, and listen, in, you know, in Genesis, God t talks about, um, to Adam and Eve, he said, uh, I blessed, he said, I blessed them. What did God do? He, he married them. Then he said, be fruitful. What was he talking about? Everybody said, oh, he's talking about having children. No, he was talking about having sex. Mm -hmm. Then, then multiply, he says, at the end, then multiply. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying is that we, we as Christians need to look at what God thinks about sexuality and not what the world has taught us. Mm -hmm. And if we don't teach our children about, about sexuality, the world's going to teach them. And it's all backwards. I, I just got a magazine, People's Magazine, and they got these two young people on the cover. And, and you don't have to guess what they're doing or what they're about to do or, or just got finished doing. It's right there. And there's no room for imagination at all. Well. In the past, it was uh, male and female. How much harder is it these days? Well, today is even harder because mm -hmm. now I've heard kids say, "Oh, what's the difference in having male with the same sex?" It's, it's, it's totally. First of all, if you're not married, you shouldn't be having sex anyway. That's yes, the first right, thing. Right. And Why did God ordain them to have to to, to, to have children? Because that's what He did. Right. You know, He said we got to replenish the earth, and that's how you do it. But two men or two women can't have children. When I go to churches and I deal with this, uh, I usually turn to the pastor, who is usually someone mm -hmm. I know, right. and uh, and I go, I go. Listen, as much as I care for you, as much as our relationship is, is tight, if we was to get married, we couldn't have children. Right, right. It's, that's not what's in God's design. That wasn't what the create, yeah, the exactly. way we created. Right. So, so what are we going to do? Do things our way or do things the Lord's way? Mm -hmm. And we wonder why uh, people are committing suicide. Uh, why? The sexual encounters today are, 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 are becoming sexual transmitted diseases. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, think about it. I mean, the AIDS, herpes, they're all they're all triple abortion. abortion. Why are they have abortion? Yeah, because they're you know having sex uh, before marriage. Yes, exactly. And, and 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 the sad part about it is, a lot of young girls it doesn't affect them till years later. Right. You know, right. Uh, and now that when they, when when they're when they're really involved in having sex with many multiple partners, you know, you have so many different diseases out there and a lot of them don't affect you until later on. Right, you, you don't know, know Human papillomavirus is a major one. You don't yeah. know it. And to right. hear you, you change your life, you accept the Lord, you get married, you, and everything is going good. Mm -hmm. and, and come to find out you can't have kids because of human papillomavirus. Right. Now right. what do you do? Right. Um, I was listening to uh, do, are you familiar with True News, T R U N E W S no. dot com? I highly recommend it. Okay. It's an uncensored Christian news station. And so uh, his son actually uh, does the Conquer series. Are you familiar with the Conquer? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. his son does the Conquer series. Oh, okay. So they were actually doing a, um, a, uh, a trade show mm -hmm. in Tennessee, I think it was, mm -hmm. or just recently. It's a Christian. Um, so he was, you know, had his uh, son that he was interviewing about the Conquer series, and I almost don't want to say this because then it'll make people think about going out to get it, but just the idea that, you know, technology is good to a certain degree, mm -hmm. but when you use it, you know, when it shouldn't be used. Right. So I don't know, he was mentioning in the fact that now they're coming out with 3D. Y yeah, yeah, it's, um, Virtual memory. Yes. yes. Virtual memory. And I think that's probably one of mm. the worst things that we can exactly. ever, ever let loose. Exactly. Because it, it takes away 
any godly thing you can use for anything you want to. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, and I can't, I'm not saying thus say the Lord, I'm not saying mm -hmm. that scientists say it, but I believe that it will end up by affecting the brain mm -hmm. physically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Physically, it's going to end up by affecting the brain, and whoever's using it is going to find themselves in a very bad position. Right. It, and you know, the fact that they're not going to desire an actual human touching no, being. No, they won't. Because, you know, that virtual reality will be able to do what they think well, you know, it, will satisfy them. I can't even tell you on the show what, what, what things they have out there mm. that is so dangerous, mm -hmm. you know, and people are spending $7,000, $6,000, you know, for imitations. Right. You know, it really, it's scary. It's getting scary. But we don't have to be afraid. Great is he that's in me and he that's in the world. I don't have to sit back and let this happen. I can go forward. That's why I speak out against it. That's why I do the things that I do. Mm -hmm. And does it affect me? Yes. I mean, there's times where I have to literally pray, pray, Lord, keep my mind clean, keep my thoughts clean, Lord, mm -hmm. help me to be able to do this. You know, and it, it gets it gets tough. But I know God has His hand on me. Right. He delivered me from pornography. You know, mm -hmm. and I don't know if I told you this last night, but I remember I graduated Teen Challenge and I came home, and I never really got rid of the pornography issue. And I was living in Long Beach, married and everything, and I was on my way down to the beach and I went by a stationery store and a, little, a voice came to me and said, Bobby, go in there and buy a lady's penthouse magazine. I go, who are you talking to? <laughs> yeah. I don't do that anymore. Yeah, right, right. And by the way, I know who you are. <laughs> yeah, so I go, what is this? So then all of a sudden, another voice comes to me and goes, Bobby, that's right. Don't listen to him. He's the father oh, of so lies. Oh, it's actually like the devil and yeah, the, uh, exactly. The yeah. devil on one shoulder and, and the angel on the other. And uh, and I said, you're right. But who did I listen to? And I always put this this question before the congregation. How many of you have done something wrong? You knew it was wrong before you did it, but you right. did it anyway. Right. And I have people raise their hand. Well, the ones that don't raise their hand, I go, you just lied. Mm -hmm. You just lied mm -hmm. because most of us do things mm -hmm. and we don't know right. why we even do them. Right. You know. Right. So I went in there pick up the magazine, threw it in the brown bag, threw the money on the counter, got ready to leave, and guess who was standing behind me? One of the ladies from my church. And mm -hmm. I'm going, oh, Lord, if she finds out what's mm -hmm. in this brown bag, mm -hmm. I'm through, she's through, the whole gospel's through. I'm going, Lord, get me out of this. Right. And, and while I'm talking, while I'm, all this Thank is going through my yeah. mind, she continues to talk. She's one of these ladies that could talk for like five hours <laughs> and didn't have to breathe. You know, so she just stopped talking. I'm saying, Lord, get me out of here. And finally she goes, Brother Lord, you don't look so good. You're sweating. And are you okay? I said, No, I'm not. She said, Is there anything I can do to help you? I go, Nope. So are you sure? I go, Yep. She said, Maybe you should go home. I said, Uh huh. And I shot past her like a football player going to the goal line. I ran about five blocks. Did you throw the like, bag in the yep, garbage? Yeah, ripped up, oh. threw the bag in the sewer, right? And never looked at pornography again. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing, that was a good. That was a good test. Yes. But you failed it. But you know, on the one hand, but then, you know, you actually, you know, did the right thing at the end. But the other thing was, I thought about this some years later. I mean, if we have a gracious God, and if it wasn't for His grace, He could have just let me have a heart attack. I was 250 pounds. Hmm. And when you're 250 pounds, you don't run anywhere. You walk <laughs> everywhere you go. I ran five blocks, you know, and I got rid of it. And I, and I asked the Lord, you know, I mean, it, the Lord could just give me a heart attack. Right. And didn't think. They'd have found me dead in the street. With this bag. With this with bag, the, yeah, right? right? Now, yeah. what kind of witness is that? That takes your ministry just out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, In the sewer, really. It, exactly, exactly. Yeah. The magazine went. Right. And that's where it should have been. Right. But, but that was one of the, the, the reasons that the Lord mm. used me to start LICCB. Well, well that was good that uh, he kind of gave you that, you know. Now, I understand the fact that um, we have Legislation Day, mm -hmm. okay? And what is Legislation Day, and why is it important that we become active in it? Well, March 15th, mm -hmm. uh, they open up the floor uh, for any cr anyone that wants to come, but mostly Christians come. Is, that, is March 15th usual every year? Yes, March yes, 15th? every okay. year, every March 15th. And they have legislators who are Christ-like and minded, um, who believe in what we believe in. Um, I could go right down the line. And, and, and what they do is they bring in speakers Actually, I spoke there two years in a row. Okay. Yeah, wow. and it was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It was. It was. Sure. It really. And uh, so, what they do, and then so we invite Christians come and find out what your government's made of. Right. 
come and find out what laws are being are being changed and, and, and what the power these people have and don't have that we're giving them a lot sometimes a lot sometimes power that we don't even we shouldn't give it to them well we know that from the head up right now don't we yeah yeah mm -hmm. well there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a problem yeah big problem there's a major problem our nation's and, in big problem yes it, yes it is mm -hmm. but but if the Christians would do like the Bible say and pray mm -hmm. just like the presidency uh, whoever gets in there we need to pray for them mm. I you know, like me, I, you know, Barack Obama, our president. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't vote for him because I, I just felt yeah. he was he was just too young and stuff. But but it didn't stop me from praying for him. Mm -hmm. But what I am guilty of, I should have prayed for him harder. I really believe that, you know. But you know, we don't do it. Right. Christians, don't, Christians don't do it. Whoever becomes president this time, we need to pray. Right. You know, we, we're not. We're relying on our own understanding. You know what I have to say? We get in trouble. I think a lot of people uh, tend to be lazy. You know what I'm saying? And they're like, yeah, but I'm working and, you know, all the responsibilities that I have to as, as home. But you know what? This is the most important responsibility because it's going to judge how their family is run, how their nation is run. So right, they should because, make that the top priority. Because we're not fighting against it. And when we don't fight against it, it runs free. Right. It runs totally free and it's not what God's called us to do. Right. Do you have like a bus that goes up there well, or how's that work? This year we're going to carpool. Mm -hmm. Next year we're gonna we're gonna get a bus. We're okay. gonna get a bus. Yeah. This is the first year that we did it on our own. Mm -hmm. I usually join other other forces that do it, and uh, but this year is the first year that we did it. We we have right now about twenty people that's going. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, hmm. about twenty people is going, and some of them are pastors, you know. Which Maybe is if a, I can find a seat in someone's car, possibly. Yeah, well, like we, we, we can make it work. Mm -hmm. Oh, you you got my number? You just call me. We'll we'll have a ride. Right. You know, wow. so, yeah, that's not a problem. And, and uh, so, when you go up there, what is in your actual purpose then? Well, they have, they have to let them know that 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 we are a force to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. You know, when they look out and see two thousand Christians in one area, they know that something has to happen. Okay. I had a politician tell me one time: anytime he gets two or three letters pertaining to one issue, it's, it's something to look into. Mm -hmm. So here you have two thousand people. But what happened is we, they've been doing it for a long time, which is great. But I just think we need a spark. Yeah, no, we definitely we, do. Yeah, yeah, we need a spark. I mean, there's things that happen in government that shouldn't have happened only because we didn't take a stand. Right, right. It's time for us to fight back. And back in the 1700s, there was a group called the Black Robe Regiment, mm -hmm. and they fought against anything that was against God from the pulpit. We lost that. Do you think um, some people are saying that it's too late with uh, the way our country is losing our freedom um, I know, and, and other things that are happening. I just had a pastor that I was interviewing and I said to him, you know, are you finding it hard to be a pastor standing up and, you know, want really what you, and saying what you want to say? He said, well, not at this moment, but it could be very soon. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I have so many pastors that call me in because I, I say things that they can't say, right. and that's a shame. You should be able to say anything to your congregation, that's but, right. they, but they can't because the congregation doesn't receive it. Now, I'll come in, and I'll say those things, and some of them will go, oh, wow, that's right. And then some of them will catch the pastor out as well. I don't like that guy. You know, mm -hmm. he, uh, he, he, he just said things. But I, I, when I start a sermon, I tell them all, anything I say can be proven by the Word of God. Right. Not just one page. Not just three scriptures. I'm talking a lot of them, mm -hmm. and everything I'm saying is from the Word of God. Right. And, and, and it helps. But we, as pastors and Christians, if we're going to save our children, we're going to save this country. We got to get on board. Well, you know, uh, in Revelations, it talks about a one-world government. Google one world government. It's all over the place. It's it, even being said by the Pope, by oh yeah. the President. It's being said by all these different. So mm -hmm. you know, I, I know. Thank goodness that God gives us his word to tell us why we were born, you know, what our purpose is, and what the end result is for us. Mm -hmm. And that uh, anybody who, you know, puts their trust and faith in Jesus Christ and realizes that we're a sinner and, and that we needed forgiveness, and that's why he died on the cross, okay, so that we become, you know, the overcomers, the conquerors. Yeah. Only problems a lot of people don't even realize that. Well, that was one of the reasons why I, um, I have a book coming out. Yeah, if you want to be able to. Black, it's called Black Knight, right? Yeah, the Black Knight. Can you be able to grab that? Yeah. So you can kind of show? Yeah. Yes. It's called, it's called the Black Knight, and uh, it was, um, wasn't even my idea. 
Okay. Jimmy Jack, Long Island, Long Island Teen Challenge, said, Bobby, you need to write a book, because he was writing one. I said, no, I'm not writing a book. Then Steve Gallagher of Pure Life says, you need to write a book. I said, I'm not writing a book. Mm -hmm. And one day, Steve, Steve Gallagher called me up and said, listen, I want to write a book about you. Right. I said, you can write all you want. I have to do with it. <laughs> you know, so, we, so we did. We wrote the book. And um, as we've been reading it and handling it, you know, as the rough copy went out to many people, um, some of them I say, some of them just to see what they what they would say because I just don't want to go up on the shelf as a Christian book. Right. I want to go up as a shelf as someone can open this up and read this and walk away with how to solve a problem to see that it's, it's it's real that I'm real that I was able to get through the drug life I was able to 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 to, to get out of jail I was able to now live somewhat of a normal life, you know mm -hmm, what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the but the best thing that I got out of, that I got out of this was that the Lord Jesus Christ came into my heart, you know, and changed me. Right. right. Changed me, made me a new creature in Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, and and that's the that's hope the I'm going to give. You know, that's why I said, you know, it's um, uh, it's it's a story of from 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 pushing, from pushing dope, dope to pushing, pushing hope. hope. That's great. You know what I mean. So yeah. and now today that we're we're in a, we're in a, 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 a drug crisis right now. You know, yeah, I, want, I want a mother to be able to pick us up and read. Uh -huh. oh, look what this guy was into. Look what he did. Look right. what, and, and and now now you know, most of my kids are saved. Uh, yeah, you know, I come from a particular town, and I know I, I guess I don't want to say the school mm -hmm. because I don't want to you know. Right. But the fact that they've got uh, they're, they're one of the highest heroin addictions that they have a lot of problems. Well see, you know what you know what happens now? It's it's in the influence in the, in areas where you never even thought before. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's and, it's inf influential, you know. Well yeah, yeah well see why. yeah and, and the thing is this because they're taking oxycodone mm -hmm. and when you can't afford to pay twenty, thirty dollars for a pill, right. you go to now they now they're making heroin accessible now, mm -hmm. even stronger than it was before. That's why a lot of kids are dying. Right. They're overdosing. Mm -hmm. You know? How do we stop them? They they had a summit yesterday, not so in Suffolk County. I don't know what the outcome was, but they plan on doing something with the drug addict. Listen to me, listen to me. If you don't take away the demand, right? You can you can take the drugs and do whatever you want to do with them. The, the people are going to find a way to get high, mm -hmm. just like with prohibition. Right. People are going to find a way to get high. We have got to take away the demand. How do we do that? Begin to teach. Take organizations like like. Long Island Citizens for Community Values, um, to Teen Challenges across the nation, and all the other groups that, that work right. against drugs. Bring in people that know what they're doing. Yes. You know what I mean? Listen, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that these guys, it's a great thing they want to do, but you got to get guys that have been there. Yeah, that have done you, you that. know. You, yeah, know. You, you, yeah. you, know. you know the lies, you know the truth. Yeah, they yeah. can't sit down and tell right. me anything. Right. You know, today I, I, we were just talking to a guy and he was talking about his son. He said, oh, I don't care he used drugs, but don't lie to me. I said, you got to be kidding me. The, the, the drugs and the lie go together. Right, right. You, you can't be one without the other. Right. Right. So he said, yeah, you know, you're kind of right. You yeah. know? I want to make sure that people, uh, what's the website for Long Island Citizen? Uh, yeah, LICCV.org or LICCV.com. Okay. You know. Now, also, Black Knight, if you could lift up the book again. Mm -hmm. Now, it, it, it isn't out yet, or it's just no, about it's out not, yet? No, it's not out yet. Um, the, okay. you know, so it should be on Borders. Uh, uh, you, you, you can um, buy it for your, your, your Kindle, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. So they can be ordered then, be mm -hmm. able to order, uh, pre-order it. Right, then right, on right. your On your website. Have a great testimony, and um, I'm thankful to see that you're out there really sharing it. Um, I just want to thank you so much for joining us today. And remember, I do speak and engagements, so you can always go to my website at jimmyprince.com. It'll give you the contact information. And if you could like my Facebook Inspired Blessings page, um, getting closer to the thousand uh, mark, and um, enjoy uh, enjoy your day, as well as the fact that uh, keep Inspired Blessings within arm's reach to help give you comfort when others are at a loss for words. Thank you, and God bless www.jeanmarieprince.com To accept and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please say this prayer. I know that I am a sinner who needs forgiveness. Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins and purify me. I know that you died and rose again to pay for my sins. I need you to be my Lord and Savior for the rest of my life. Thank you in the name of Jesus.
Amen. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible.